Hi, welcome back to Engine Shop Joe. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, please do. Tonight we're going to finish up the SCR system, the last part of the after treatment as of 2022 anyway. If they'll add anything after this in the future, I don't know. We'll just have to wait and see. Uh, I don't have actual pictures of the SCR brick. It's just a giant stainless steel cylinder uh, tube, if you will, with welded end shut. That's what it looks like. You can do Google searches to see what's inside of them if you're interested. It's just uh, bricks that look very much like the uh, DOC and the DPF, except they're all straight through. None of them have closed cells. So we're going to talk about the gases that go in, what happens, what the system does, because if you understand how it works, it's a lot easier to figure out what's going on when it's not working correctly. After this uh, tonight's video, the next few videos are going to be actual real world problems that we had on our vehicles, all SCR system related, all the way from the input lines or the def lines are missing to the SCR brick is slightly inefficient to the SCR system is completely missing. And of course, it, it wasn't missing in that last case, but the faults said that it was so we were able to figure out what's going on and you'll be able to figure it out too. So let's take a look at the SCR system. Okay, let's take a look at how the exhaust gas flows through the system. Up at the top left, we've got exhaust gas coming out of the turbocharger. Let's say we're going up a hill at peak torque, full throttle. It's loaded with NOx, uh, nitrous oxide, because remember nitrous oxide is formed from high pressure and high temperatures, and that's what you have when you're pulling at peak torque. That piston's moving slow and there's a lot of pressure in the cylinder. So we've got that uh, red arrow representing that. It goes in through the DOC and DPF, and you know the job there is to just start to break down NOx and then to uh, catch all the particulate matter or soot and then burn it in a DPF. So the red arrow coming out of the DPF would just be a nice, clear, hot exhaust gas stream that's got uh, too much NOx in it, nitrous oxide. It enters the decomposition pipe right out of the DPF. They're all clamped together with gaskets. There's uh, no leaks. It's a sealed system, even though it's separate parts. The decomposition pipe about three quarters of the way through has a waffle plate. The gas, the gas increases in velocity through that pipe. It hits that plate. It kind of looks like a pancake with, with just slots cut in it uh, that are at an angle so that it swirls the gas. The def injector is right before the plate on the uh, pre-plate side. It injects def fluid. It mists it in and the fluid goes into the hot exhaust gas stream that's traveling at a pretty fast clip. And the plate swirls it and it almost immediately becomes a vapor and it mixes in with the exhaust gas, heads into the ca catalyst on the right. The dotted black lines represent a plate that is welded into the catalyst. It completely seals the end of the catalyst and it has evenly spaced small holes drilled in it. And that forces the exhaust gas and depth to go evenly through the catalyst and around all the elements. Now the elements are sealed to the edge of the can. And I know in the illustration in that, but in actuality they are. And the number one sensor, which is the NH3 ammonia sensor, is between the, the first and the second element. And the gas travels through those elements. The first two elements from the top down, the lighter tan color, their job is to uh, break down the NOx into nitrogen and uh, carbon dioxide and water vapor. The third or ammonia slip element at the very bottom, the dark brown one, its job is to catch those yellow dots, which is ammonia that wasn't catalyzed in the first two elements and then break that down so that we have no ammonia going out of the tailpipe. That NH3 sensor number one in the middle of the can, uh, they're not putting that on a newer vehicles. They've got the SCR bricks technology down to where they don't have to worry about ammonia slip anymore. And in fact, if you do uh, a, an SCR campaign, if your engine has one that's active, and you do have to replace the SCR can. Sometimes the new can will not have the NH3 
ammonia sensor in it, even though the old one did. Early on, they put that in. I personally never saw one that flagged ammonia. I did have a couple of them, uh, sensors fail, and they were pretty pricey. Uh, three years ago, they were about 700 bucks for that sensor in the module. And it's like a knock sensor. It's a one-piece deal that you just have to replace the whole thing on. So uh, number four is the entire SCR brick, that stainless steel can. And that is a sealed can. You can't take it apart. Uh, sensor number two would be the particulate matter sensor. That's a sensor they put in the 2018 and newer units. And its job is to make sure that the diesel particulate filter is not cracked or leaking. And if it is, soot will get through and that soot will come into the SCR brick and it'll end up going out into the exhaust. Because remember, the SCR brick's job is not to burn soot. It's to catalyze nitrous oxide so that it uh, becomes nitrogen, carbon dioxide, and water vapor out the stack. Uh, the, the particulate matter sensor number two has a, the ability to um, regen itself. It's got a heating element in the tip that can raise the temperature hot enough to clean any soot out that gets trapped in there. If enough soot gets trapped in there, it'll start logging faults. I have not seen that on any of our vehicles as of yet. There is a test and insight you can do to force a regen on that sensor. If it doesn't need it, it'll tell you when you try to execute the test that it's not required. And number three is our uh, good old NOx sensor. And if you look at the particulate in a NOx sensor, they look almost the same. They're very close to each other in proximity. The uh, particulate matter sensor is a little bit thinner than the NOx sensor is. The, the stainless steel body of it, the tube part of it, where it screws into the, uh, to the outlet of the exhaust. And these sensors are right where the um, outlet of the SCR brick is so that they can uh, do their sensing as soon as the gas comes out of that brick. Up until about 2018, on a uh, Class A tractor, most of the time, if it was a PACCAR unit, this was in what's called a switchback. So the exhaust gas would come out of the turbo, go down under the passenger side by the front of the step there, go into the DPF, go to the back of the truck, come out, go through the decomp tube back to the front of the truck, up in the SCR element, Again, back to the back of the truck and out the stack. They called that a switchback. Here are the three basic configurations, vertical, straight through or horizontal, and then switchback. Now we're gonna take a look at the newest, which is called the unitized after treatment. And this is 2018 and newer. And it looks like one great big SCR brick. It's bigger in diameter and a little bit shorter than a traditional SCR brick and everything's taken care of in one package, and it works very well. When you're talking about failures in the SCR system, you need to, in your head, kind of put a, the problems in a category. So uh, over on the top left, we've got measuring errors. Measuring errors can be caused by software, sensors, wiring with resistance or bad connections. Next underneath is climate, extreme cold, if you idle for days, and I've seen it done, the SCR pipe, um, the uh, decomp pipe can just fill up almost completely with DEF fluid that's dried. It looks like giant snowballs. Uh, next is the operator on the bottom left. Uh, if the operator allows extreme idle time or check engine lights come on and he doesn't stop and get the thing looked at. Over on the top right, we've got hardware problems. Those would be parts failures or joint leaks where you have uh, smoke coming out of the pipes. You should never see that. Next down is maintenance practice. Dirt in the def tank, which causes the system to have poor pressure. Uh, DPF maintenance schedule. Maybe the DPF was supposed to be changed to 200,000 miles and it's got 500,000 on it. It's the original DPF and it's all busted up. Uh, small issues will grow into big ones if you ignore them. And on the bottom, you've got contamination, which is uh, additives. There are some additives that you could, you could put in fuel that would damage the after treatment. So you should always look at the bottle and make sure that it mentions it doesn't add, damage the after treatment if you want to use additives. 
and of course dirt and, and then wrong fluids. And a little story, uh, something that really happened. There was a small fleet and it was a fleet of buses and they got their new buses and they had DEP on them and nobody had ever seen DEP before. And on the side of the bus, there was an extra door next to the fuel door. And uh, it had, when you open it up, a nice blue cap. So one of the drivers who was a good person, uh, when it got really cold out, he thought he was going to come in early and just fill everybody's unit up with washer fluid. So he filled up 10 of the buses, DEF tanks, with washer fluid. And you know what happened from there. Now... All I'll say is this, uh, it didn't damage anything in the system. We just had to take the DEF tanks off and clean them out and then put clean DEF in and run it a while and all the numbers came back into normal play. So that fleet ended up putting locks on all those doors so only a mechanic could open them until time went by and people understood that that blue cap that says DEF on it is just that. It's a it's a dev cap. Thanks for joining me. See you next time on Engine Shop Joe.